it never ceases to amaze me um, how much nonsense Hollywood tries to push and um, how, how much they try to uh, inflate the importance of what are essentially um, the equivalent of throwaway junk food movies. That's essentially what it is. Regardless of um, what you think about whatever the subject is that they're trying to push, whatever you think of about feminism, um, with this example, it doesn't really matter what you think. It's, it's, it's sort of asking yourself, like, is this, is this film um, really the most important thing for feminism um, in the grand scheme of things? Is it really? Is, is this... Is this is this that important or is it just something that's made to make money and um, and that's about it kind of gone are the days when they write a great script and go oh that's good you know um, regardless of whether it had social commentary or whatever it was it was just good wasn't it and and you know and if it was and if it maybe changed people's perceptions of things or you know made you think about different things and maybe um, you know, shed shed light on racism, or or shed light on the um, the exploitation of women. I mean, whatever it may have done, then it was a bonus. But it just had to be good, was the thing. But now it's just, well, we we just want to make some money, because um, what they churn out over and over again shows a real lack of respect for the audience, um, and then trying to make out that these films are really important and are dealing with issues <laughs> and, and uh, you know, are going to empower people. Um, it shows even more um, a lack of respect for the audience because they don't care. Um, they, just, they just think it'll make them look good. And your people, these loud voices who, who champion this stuff, who... It's a bizarre paradox of, if that's the correct word, like of, of you know, people who are very far left leaning, I suppose, who should be sort of anti corporation and anti consumerism, and yet they champion and support the biggest piles of consumerist dump imaginable, which is films like this. It has to be said. Um, it's bizarre how much they, they, they champion them and get behind them. Um, these big corporate machines that don't care about substance. And it kind of just reveals the people that champion this stuff to be people who lack substance themselves, you know? I mean, for the one, Elizabeth Banks says, my film is loaded with sneaky feminist ideas. Like, isn't it just a Charlie's Angels reboot? I mean, when the first Charlie's Angels film came out, you know, and had the, uh, the Destiny's Child hit, what was it called? I remember but it was their first breakout hit in the UK that's for sure number one across the world you know I bought all my own things I bought it I depend on me you know independent ladies yeah 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 you know that's about like 18 years ago 18 yeah something like that um, but even when that came out people were like Charlie's what I mean no one really knew about Charlie's Angels so why are they doing Charlie's Angels again? Because they haven't got any ideas. They go, oh, Charlie's Angels. Oh, is there a feminist angle on that? Well, it's got three women in it, I suppose. Well, that'll do. And do you remember Elizabeth Banks? I sort of do. So actor, writer, and director Elizabeth Banks is the rarest of people in Hollywood, a woman who gets her voice heard. That statement is, is just based on opinion, isn't it? Um off the back going do you know how difficult it was to get this piece of crap film made that no one wants to see that's inevitably going to be forgotten about and rebooted again in three years with three black lesbians as her Charlie's Angel reboot arrives in cinemas she talks about setting her own agenda equal pay and what she learned from Julia Roberts it's just it doesn't because it doesn't really matter about what she thinks about the world and what her feminist opinions are is the fact that she thinks we, we care about her opinion is, 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 is the one thing. Celebrities are just insane. Elizabeth Banks was starting out in Hollywood in the late 90s. 
She had one girl to have a career like Julia Roberts. Everyone wanted to be like Julia Roberts, she says. I still want to be Julia Roberts, believe me. And um, we're all rooting for you, but I don't think you're ever going to be Julia Roberts. If I was Julia Roberts, I would not be working this hard. All right, that's a bit of, that's a, bit of a slight on Julia Roberts. What? Over the last past two decades, Banks has been working very hard indeed. And if her name isn't instantly familiar, her body of work certainly is. She has been a regular in commercial comedy films, The 40 Year Old Virgin. What to expect when you're expecting. Oh, yes. I totally remember her in those films. And a recurring guest star on TV shows such as 30 Rock and Modern Family, for which she received Emmy, Emmy nominations. For a time, she played the eccentric Effie Trinket in the wildly successful Hunger Games trilogy. While simultaneously playing the uh, gobby Gail Abernathy McCadden in Pitch Perfect series. Right, okay, great. But if Banks worked as a producer and a director, she directed Pitch Perfect 2, which became the highest grossing music comedy film of all time. <laughs> I like it, they, they really reach for things. <laughs> highest grossing music comedy film of all time. Uh, that's kind of subjective, isn't it? Anyway, not the figures, but you know. Um, that has brought her international recognition. She has transformed from a jobbing actor to a bankable filmmaker. I'm saying, well, she made a satin out. People who direct sequels to successful first films. You know? Um, kind of reaching a bit, isn't it? But she has made it seem easy. No, she hasn't. This month sees the release of a new Charlie's Angels reboot, the film Banks has written, produced and directed. God. Now 45, she has become what the industry might call a triple threat, an actress, a filmmaker and a business magnet rolled into one. Well, I haven't seen the business acumen here yet. Um, you know, if someone goes, hey, let's reboot Charlie's Angels, I wouldn't go, Jesus, slow down, entrepreneur. You have a bit these, whoa, these wild, world-changing ideas. <laughs> Hold it down. I was a frustrated actor when she says, when chatting in a low-key... LA neighborhood brunch spot, an airy fairy sort of place that seems at odds with her work ever. I don't need to know this. There are instructions to leave your laptop in the bag, please. This table is for dining, daydreaming, and conversation. It sounds like a very wanky establishment. I didn't have enough to do, she continues. The industry wasn't offering me enough. It wasn't permitting me to tell stories I wanted to tell, like Pitch Perfect 2 and a Charlie's Angels reboot. I mean, these are the stories that women with strong voices want to tell, you know, you can forget, you know, forget The Handmaid's Tale and The Colour Purple, or, or even, what's that, what's that film when that fat girl gets raped, Precious, forget all that stuff, this is the, these are the stories that women want to hear, that's right, Julia Roberts never had those problems, she decides what she wants to do, when she wants to. You have to make your own opportunities. God, I think she's got kind of a resentment against Julia Roberts, you know. In 2013, typical of a blonde girl, typical, uh, sorry, in 2013, Banks was on the lookout for a rom-com to direct. When Pitch Perfect 2 came along, the opportunity was unexpected. I like the way people's um, aspirations are like, oh, I just really want to direct a sequel, a rom-com sequel. She'd been following her own path for a while. She directed and started a public service announcement for the American Heart Association that went very viral. God, this is re this is so reaching. This really is reaching so often. Do you know what I mean? Like this is someone writing a CV and the, and like you know there's people who guide you on how to write CVs. Going, oh no, but we need to ramp up. I mean, what did you achieve? Yeah, you just made this Heart Association video, but like you know. What do, you know, you need to show like how important it was. And saying, oh, well, it went, it went very viral. I said, Did it? Well, okay, yeah, well, that's good. Put that on your CV. And a funny short film with the actor Chloe Grace Moretz. Banks had already set up a production company, Brownstone, with her husband, the sports writer Max Handelman. When the director of Pitch Perfect declined to take on a sequel, Banks considered it a no-brainer to take the job. She'd been a producer on the franchise already. She had all the intel she needed. 
it was not much of an opportunity. You're the producer anyway, right? I suggest Banks has been frustrated director on on set her whole career and she thinks I'm not the only one. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's many frustrated directors on the set, so you probably shouldn't direct. She learned everything she knows on the job, Banks says, but that means you recognise pretty quickly when when you're in process with somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. And when you're trusting your performance with someone who doesn't know what they're doing, it's terrifying. It happens to everybody. We all work with people who are not up to the job. Mm -hmm. Banks recalls going into a meeting at Sony to announce simply, I want to direct a Charlie's Angels movie. <laughs> Do you think she actually did that? Because that seems bizarre to me. But I would have thought it'd be a bunch of stuffy business types, completely out of touch, just going, hey, what, 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 what do we own the rights to? Uh, Charlie's Angels? Yeah, let's just fucking do that again. Let's do that again. Feminism's popular now, isn't it? Uh, isn't everyone running around saying they're feminists now? Yeah, we, well, that'll, 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 you know, that'll stop people from slating our film online. We can just label them as misogynists. That'll do. Perfect. Oh, we'll have to get a woman to direct it. Well, you know that chick, she made that, that very viral... Um, you know, heart disease infomercial. Yeah. Yeah, she'll do it. Yeah, she'll do anything. All right, okay, get her in. But the fact that she went into a Sony, I don't think she went in, like, I, because I don't want to think that she'd do that. Maybe she did, but the fact is that she, I thought the film she wanted to write, she storms into, she storms into the offices at Sony and says, right, now listen here, motherfuckers. Right, I'm a strong, strong woman. And I want to make the film that I want to make. And, hey, sure, sure, sure. What, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What, what, what ideas do you have? An epic Joan of Arc tale? No, 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 no. I want to make the Charlie's Angels reboot. You do? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> to be able to work for a big studio with a big budget, they don't usually just hand that out. No, they select you. But I felt ready and confident. Pitch Perfect 2 earned $69 million on opening weekend, setting a record for a first-time director, bringing Banks accolades as a filmmaker. But again, it's a sequel, though, isn't it? It's a sequel. Suddenly she was in demand in a way she hadn't quite been previously. To realise a film's larger vision, rather than play a smaller acting role within it, I wouldn't say I could have directed whatever I wanted, she says. Well, clearly, because, like, why would you choose to do this? Like, out of everything, why are you just so caught up in the corporate machine you think this is good? I, I just don't know. Like, I, just, I, don't, I don't know. But I definitely had leeway to have some autonomy over what I was going to do next. Watching Charlie's Angels, it's impossible to question our ambition. Charles Townsend's investigative agency has expanded. There are now groups of angels, all smart, highly trained women, and probably... Built like stick insects who can just whoop anyone's ass. This is one of the problems with a lot of this this shit that they they do in Hollywood now. Is the 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 stick insect girl who can just kick anyone's ass. You've never had that with men. They've always been someone you look at and go. Even in if you've got to suspend your disbelief a bit and go, well, well you know, that's, this feels a bit stupid. But at the same time, it's like you know. You see The Rock, or you see Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, uh, even Jason Statham, you go, yeah, yeah, he, he, he could probably whoop a few of them people. But there's not, but none of the women they put in those roles, you go, oh, yeah, definitely. Except, what's the name who plays um, Brianna Tuff in Game of Thrones? She's the only bird you, you've seen and gone, yeah, 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 she, of course she kicked her ass. Like, she's, look at her. She's, she's like, Phew. you know? It's just a bit of a silly thing. And it, it makes, it, again, it's, it's insulting. But, you know, they don't care about insulting people's intelligence. They just want to make money from crap. Anyway, um, anyway, Banks plays a key role. Bosley. Oh, so they've replaced Bosley with a woman. Brilliant. Okay, great. So there's Kristen Stewart, Naomi Scott, and Ella Belinska. I don't know who that is. Some of the film's details, for example, a female employee discovers a sinister plot in a large tech company but is dismissed by her male bosses might be constructed construed as political oh this film is I think this film is going to just change the world as we know it I really believe that the Charlie's Angels reboot possibly one of the most important films ever made maybe anyway um 
Is that impossible to avoid in 2019? I'm not making any grand statements while well, you're directing Charlie's Angels reboot, of course not. I happen to make an action movie about corporate um, mal malfessence. I don't know. Um, that also happens to star women, and everyone's like, uh, what a political statement. And I'm like, is it? No, no one said that until I read this article. Now it's a political statement. I never thought it was a political statement. I was like, oh, God, what are they going to get? Same with the Ghostbusters remake, when it was like, oh, well, of course they're going to redo Ghostbusters. And they said, oh, we're going to put all women in it. I was like, right, well, at least that's something. That's the first thing I thought. I was like, well, at least that's something different, I suppose. Do you know? That's as good as they're going to try. Well, we'll just make them all women. But they're all the same. You know, three white... <laughs> Three white people and one black person. It's like it was just, just the genders were reversed, you know. <laughs> it was just like, well, I guess they had different personalities, which were kind of all the same personality. But anyway, I digress. I digress. Um, if they were all men and it was the exact same story, it wouldn't be very political, would it? Well, no, it would, because it would be Charlie's Angels with men, wouldn't it? It's Charlie's Angels. The whole fact is they're women. I mean, I don't get it. I wanted to make a broader, appealing movie rather than something actual, actually political. <laughs> you've chosen, you've chosen, the, you have chosen the right thing. She finds it interesting that simply because I made a movie that stars women, that it's fe that it's feminist enough. That's something I heard when I was putting the movie together. Like, you're l lucky you're going to make it. It's feminist enough. You don't have to push it. And I was like, I don't think I'm pushing it at all. I'm glad you agree. Uh, Banks has ditched the male gaze of Charlie's Angels past and has loaded the film with sneaky feminist ideas. Oh, now, so, is that, so it's not a feminist film, but it's, it is? I don't get it. Um, little thing she says, like, don't forget to smile. Brilliant. Because what I've heard, um, and you know, in all the countries where uh, women are thoroughly oppressed, you know, when they, they can't vote, um, you know, um, aren't allowed to work in certain places, uh, you know, beaten in the streets, uh, you know, so, what's it, statutory rape is fine in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the confines of a marriage, and, you know, all this kind of stuff, genital mutilation, all this sort of stuff. But being told to smile... terrible it's, it's just it's breaks my heart anyway because she because the reality for female directors she says is that they are still not afforded the same opportunities as men even those who get to direct a juggernaut like charlie's angels don't call it a juggernaut please i don't think you've ever heard anyone say to a man you can't direct you can't direct that story because it, it, it's about a woman and yet i have been told i'm not going to tell you what who said it I couldn't direct men because they wouldn't follow me as a director. Well, tell that to other female directors. Oh. Directing is all about leadership. So basically they were saying I couldn't lead. I work with a lot of difficult men as an actor and it's never been a problem. A good leader is a good leader. I did not take to heart that, what that gentleman said to me. But I'm positive he's never said that to a man. I was just some idiot that you met. Uh, Banks was born in Elizabeth Mitchell. We don't care about that. Uh, my upbringing was socially economically tough. Oh, yes, blah, 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 blah. We don't care. Uh, the family practiced Judaism, though Banks has never formally converted. When we meet Jewish New Year, it's just a few days away. We're being bad Jews this year. What, you practice Judaism, but you're not a Jew? Isn't that kind of out? Isn't that, like, kind of frowned upon? Isn't it? Hollywood. After a decade in the same home, the bank's kind of recently upgraded to a sizable property in Sherman Oaks. Good. Talk turns to pay parity. Michelle Williams has just broached the uh, issue in a speech at the Emmys. She's one of the greatest actors of her generation. Oh, Michelle Williams. She's right in Dawson's Creek, I suppose. She's one, uh, um, She works so hard on every job, and yet in Venom, Tom Hardy made way more money than her. Because he's Tom Hardy's the star. I didn't even know she was in Venom. It kind of goes to like, oh, I work so hard, but isn't he, isn't he the star? Because you get like, isn't that how it works? Anyway, do, do you know what I'm saying? What? 
It's like you getting paid more than the other three angels in the movie you're directing. How much are you getting paid? It's hard to be like, you guys, you know, sometimes just paying us tells us that you like us. You can show that you value us in many ways. One is by giving us awards. One is by letting us play really cool roles. Another one is to play us. She's there planning. It's interesting that we're expected as women not to value money as a factor in our worth when it's a factor in everyone's worth. This is news to me. What, women? What, women not value themselves by the monetary? What? Women and money? What? Does she feel that things are starting to improve at all? I don't know. I hope. Honestly, I'm having a hard time feeling optimistic in the world we're living in today in general. Whether that's about women being directors or women having autonomy over their bodies. The full autonomy over your body thing is getting a bit too out of hand, isn't it? But that's a debate for another day, isn't it? Do you know what? Next of all, they're going to be asking if they can chop their own arms off, you know, legally. I feel like every step forward, we're looking over our shoulder, waiting to see if they're going to come for us. How long has she been feeling like this? Since Trump was elected? Uh-huh. In 2016, Banks gave a powerful speech at the Democratic National Convention in support of Hillary Clinton. Well, you know, no surprise that the woman who chose to direct, who asked to direct the Charlie's Angels reboot, was also endorsed one of the biggest corporate whores of of our generation, of any generation, Hillary Clinton, when she famously parodied the soon-to-be president. Some of you know me from The Hunger Games, in which I play F. Trinket, a cruel, out-of-touch reality TV star who wears insane wigs while delivering... No, no one remembers. I I ain't seen The Hunger Games. I don't care. Her show of support for Hillary was a no-brainer if you're a feminist. My goodness me. These people are deluded. There's got to be some, like, first-wave feminists rolling over their graves, suffragettes jumping out of zombies with axes. <laughs> Go to kill your ass. That's just a ridiculous statement. <laughs> I'm here for more justice in the world generally. There was all this anecdotal evidence that the system works against us, and now the system is openly and actively working against us. I'm a white lady. It's so much worse for people of colour. Oh, here we go. A non gender. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I know they generally read from scripts because they're actors, but it's like... The script is always the same. I'll tell you this. Here's a factor for you. You work in a nonsense industry that spouts nonsense. And if Hillary Clinton had won the election, no one would be talking about this kind of stuff. In fact, it would all be a great leap forward, even when the same stuff's going on. Even if the same stuff was going on. Do you know what I mean? If the same stuff was happening that is happening now, but someone else was in charge, there'd be none of this doom and gloom and no one talking about it. It's just, come on, man. Spare me. I'm done. You you just... It, this isn't an important leap forward. You're making... <coughs> just... You're making throwaway junk that costs millions... And it's going to tank. And so it should. 